an average investor made more than 30% gains in the stock markets last year a patient investor probably made more than 50% but wealth creation is a lot more complex process one good year in a bull run does not guarantee happy retirement at all in fact ask a patient investor who has invested in hdfc bank kotak bank tcs infosys how much money they have made in the last two years in today's volatile global ecosystem it is very important to continuously and objectively evaluate your approach sectors which carried the stock market on their backs last year may not be the strongest horses of tomorrow we'll jump directly into an excel based tool that i have created over the past one week we'll go through parameters ratings and a score concept then we'll jump to how you can tune the sectors and ratings your numbers your ratings and preferences may not be same as mine we'll go through certain scenarios like recession war over the course of this video i'll show you certain heat maps which will reflect visually which sectors are investable towards the end i have created a very important concept i call it hypothesis template let's get started with understanding the model we learn how to select the sectors we want to invest in parameters that can be tuned the ratings against those parameters the final score that comes per sector the model has five key areas the first one is the metadata which is a sector itself for this model i started with 36 sectors overall which are listed here but then i excluded few of them let's first see what all have been excluded pharma chemicals oil and gas related equipment this is not oil and gas real estate operations when you're doing your own model you could obviously exclude or include any sectors you want by just flipping the value in the column i now market cap band the top 3 sectors which have the highest combined market cap after that 3 is given for everything which has 10 lakh crores or above market cap then 2 for 5 lakh crore and above 1 for 1 lakh crore and above and 0 for everything which is below the value government priority this is not government spending into the sector but a measure of is the government interested in that sector growing or not so for example banking services this is key for any economy to grow so government interest is 2 here oil and gas 1 the reason it is one and not two is there is a lot of thrust on renewable energy right now from government's perspective software and it services this is the sector which gets most of the exports and the dollars into the country so definitely government wants it to grow fii interest yes banking wise fii's have very high interest fii's hold stakes in most of the large banks similarly oil and gas software automobiles these sectors have significant participations from fii in terms of holding size most of the ratings which i have put here are based upon actual fi data for the key stocks in that sector grows with gdp if the gdp for india say increases 20% will that sector increase for example banking definitely yes it is directly proportional to gdp size because all the transactions of that gdp size goes through banks only oil and gas yes more demand will be there for transportation and hence oil and gas will be required but again as gdp increases we will also go for mass transport that is why this is 2 and not 3 transport infrastructure definitely has to grow if gdp has to grow grows with inflation inflation is here to stay if inflation is high banking will grow if inflation is high oil and gas consumption will be less because people will tend to cut down on their expenses inflation does impact the export sector because cost of production goes up for example in last few years when inflation was high and labor rates increased a lot the profitability of software and it services companies dropped significantly second last year growth last year growth these are numbers corresponding to the market cap changes in these columns g and h anticipated growth are we expecting these sectors to grow significantly in the times to come zero means ordinary growth i'm expecting banks to grow at ordinary growth for the reason nbfcs are taking up significant part of the economy right now and india is not even yet seen a single neo bank note that the gdp related growth for the banks is already factored in grows with gdp column so what is anticipated to grow a lot insurance a very little part of india's population is today insured construction and engineering will continue we still have significant people who don't have pakka houses there is a lot of infrastructure to be built aerospace and defense a significant government expenditure will happen in aerospace and defense transport infrastructure has to continue growing the government has done a good job already in the last few years this has to continue at the same pace in fact the pace should perhaps increase if we have to compete with china consumption related as india's gdp increases in size with one of the reasons being consumption banking will increase automobiles will increase this is where public buys in bulk rupee depreciation oil and gas is negatively impacted because the incoming crude gets costlier software and it services is an export sector it is a beneficiary we get more rupee per dollar from software exports crude above 
for example oil and gas the input cost increases significantly there are certain stocks which export like for example mrpl but as soon as crude increases the government imposes windfall tax as a result their profitability does not go up significantly that is why i put minus 2 here zero means not too much impact of crude above 90 beta i showed you the column earlier this is a direct copy of that column Cycle status means is the current boom at a very mature stage. For example, banking are at a very mature stage, in my opinion. Automobiles are at a very mature stage. A significant population who wanted to buy automobiles is buying it right now. Now, three does not mean that a two or one or zero will follow immediately in the quarters or year to come. This three may continue for years also. Monopoly, oil and gas, each and every stock like Reliance, ONGC, IOC, all of them have a monopoly in their own niche areas. Automobile, while there are major players, each player has its own niche. For example, Maruti, passenger cars, Mahindra and Mahindra, SUVs, Tata, getting better and better into EVs. Government regulation, banking is very heavily regulated by the government. Telecom, heavily regulated by the government. Three, higher than banking. Metals and mining, very heavily regulated. If the prices are expected to rise, government will impose taxation and other means to reduce the exports so that the prices don't go up in the domestic sector. Aerospace and defense, most large players which are manufacturers are government companies, heavily regulated. So these are the 15 inputs that go into the model which give us sector score. Sector score is nothing but the rating that we have provided in these cells multiplied by a weight. This weight could be one in each cell. I put government priority at a higher weight compared to the other columns. FIA interest typically drives up the P. That is why I have put two here. Government regulation is a very important input as well that decides the fate of many sectors. That is why I have put two here. So the score is some product of these cells with the applicable weight divided by the sum of the weights. The scores in the cells are absolute values. However, the colors you see here are relative. The top values are more investable, so they are green. The lower values are deeper shades of red and are less investable. The next section is a heat map representation of the scores. So very clearly banking with a score of 1.97 is the biggest one, followed by construction and engineering, fleet and logistics, metals, telecom and so on. The least preferred is household goods with a score of 0.74. In this section, we learn how to tune the model, parameter values, the weights. Combination of these will give you a score. Relative score among sectors helps you decide which sector is more investable. If you think food and tobacco does not grow with GDP, you could just directly go and change the value to 2. That's okay. These are absolute numbers. So if you want to put say a scale of 0 to 4 instead of 0 to 3 or if you want to get rid of minus 1. So feel free to change these values. Just keep an eye on the multiplier. This is going to get multiplied by the number directly below it in row 40. Now applicable weight is what is getting multiplied. I have provided four options to tune the applicable weight. In this section, we'll validate the model by simulating the current economy, which is a bull run. We'll check what the model is recommending for the current economy and has that panned out in the last one or two years. So looking at the data points which stand today, banking services is recommended with the highest score 1.97. Now this sector has lost its flavor in the last couple of months, especially with the heavyweights like HDFC, Kotak and all, but that's more of a recent phenomena. The banking sector, despite being the largest, went up 30% last year and 8% in the previous year. The model recommends stay invested in banking the next bet is construction and engineering. This sector went up 107% last year and 30% in the year before. Let's select construction and engineering. LNT is by far the largest one, nearly a market cap of 5 lakh crores. Most stocks in this sector are near their 52 week high and very, very far off from their 52 week low. Let's check fleet and logistics up 45% last year. Minus 9% in the previous year. Container Corporation of India is the largest company. Near 2 week high. It was up today also. What is least preferred as per the model? Household goods. So it was up minus 4% last year and minus 13% the previous year. Despite a bull run in the country, this sector did not perform at all. It is appearing at a bottom even in the model. Let's check oil and gas. Though it is up 46% this year, it did minus 10% in the previous year. But this sector is very sensitive to a lot of factors including FII money, including crude prices, dollar prices. That is why the model is not recommended to invest in the sector. Let's check once more telecom. 73% returns in the previous year. 
minus 4% in the year before. Now, this sector is unique because one of the largest player, Jio, is not even listed in this sector. It appears with Reliance Industries in oil and gas. Let's check the final one, automobile and auto parts. Up 92% this year. There is a boom in auto right now. 12% previous year. Most stocks are near 52 week and lifetime highs. So in a bull run scenario, auto does pretty well. That is why it is among the higher recommendations. In this section, we'll simulate the future. For example, what if there is a war? What if a recession comes over? A bull run continuing for next one year or two years? And how to create custom models? For example, if you want to simulate the election results coming up on 4th of June, and you have a thesis that, okay, this government will be formed and this will be the outcome in the economy. And you can tune the model using the custom model and see the outcome. So right now we are in a bull run. Apply. So these values are copied to applicable weight. Now suppose we are expecting for whatsoever reason, maybe driven by external factors, we expect a recession to strike say in three months. So what will be the sectors looking like? Let's apply and check. Observe the changes. Immediately the scores change significantly here. The negative value sectors are expected to cause losses and hence are removed from the heat map automatically. Telecom will be the favored sector, the largest one 3.84 which we just saw, followed by metals and mining. Now note that the outcome of the model is not what has decided the weights which I have put against those 16 parameters. What you are seeing in the heat map is the output unbiased based upon the mathematical formulas. So my reasoning here is to come out of the recession, there will be government spending in infrastructure where metals will be required heavily. Aerospace and defense 3.5. So government can't slow down on building the defense infrastructure like helicopters, ships and all. It takes half a decade to a decade to modernize the overall ecosystem. What will remain out of flavor? Specialty retailers don't invest. Home building don't invest. Household goods don't invest. Now let's suppose there is a major war that gets broken. It could involve India and last significant time. Automobile becomes minus 11. Only three sectors will give positive returns as per the model if a war breaks out. Telecom, aerospace, metals and mining. You could build your own custom model also. For example, if you want to say a majority government is formed on June 4, FIIs will love that and their interest in the country will go up. Let's scale up this value to 5. So sectors which enjoy FII interest, they will go up a lot. The sectors which are on priority list of government will have a higher weight. Let's again say 6. Let's assume inflation will go down. So let's reduce the weight to 0.5. And let's check again. So banking remains at the top. In fact, it gets stronger. Now the score is 2.08. So this is how you can build your own custom scenarios and play them out on this model. Last but not the least, we'll discuss now a very important template, which I called hypothesis template. That will help you beat your subconscious biases. It will help you document your reasoning for buying a stock. Maybe create calendar entries, say in your Gmail. As reminders, let's go through the hypothesis template. The sector you are investing in, say defense. Stock, say HAL. Reasons for investing, let's say government interest. Right now, there is an option to provide five reasons. You could add more if you want. Favorable events expected. Budget allocation, for example. Now you could put a RAG when you revisit the strategy. For example, you could put a red if the budget allocation is not in line with your expectation or put a green if it is. Then you can put some sort of commentary on when you expect that event to happen and play out because that will decide when the stock price will run up. Typically stock prices run up ahead of the event, not after the event if the event is well known. What could go wrong? Earlier this year, I created certain videos where I talked about why my hypothesis went wrong, especially in the soda ash sector. For example, China demand went down and I had not anticipated that. That is why I lost a lot of money in that particular investment. So what is the adverse event? What is the probability? Now probability, you should start with low probability. Ideally, if the probability is already strong or if that event has happened already, then you should not be investing. And when the event is no longer applicable, you can say no longer threat. Let's suppose we bought the stock at 3000 levels. We bought 20 quantity. And the current price when we are revisiting the strategy is 3300. So 10% profit on a current value of 66,000. You could add few more parameters for tracking in the area which is available here. 
Now I recommend to create an exit strategy at the time of purchasing. A lot of say that we'll keep the stock forever. That's fine. You could put the price at a very high 33,000 maybe, but at least you should know that you are buying something with an exit in mind or not, document your strategy. For example, your strategy could be exit 25% of the stock when the stock price say doubles. The reason could be simple profit booking. Now, if the stock goes down or up, are you willing to average? Add more on the lower side or add more on the higher side? Usually we don't add more when the stock goes up, which is not a good strategy. Stocks are expected to go up only. Don't wait for good stocks to correct more to buy more. It's okay to buy higher if the stock has already appreciated because of EPS increasing significantly. For the reasons I have provided a conviction reason, it could be a very strong conviction, it, it could be an external advice, whatever is the reason, just document it. Also, you could decide your own pattern, but do decide when will you will revisit the strategy. If the amount invested is high by your appetite, then in the initial days, visit the strategy more frequently. Every quarter, you should definitely revisit the strategy ahead of the results or after the results or both. After you could watching this video, when you see a senior member of the industry who has spent decades in the industry, then you will probably afford a smile because they'll be talking mostly about sectors and not stocks. You will now know why. Without a good understanding of sectors also, you can make a lot of money in the stock market. But a good understanding of the logic which I have explained in this video will help you identify sectors which will give you lot better returns and hence your returns in an year and your CAGR will improve dramatically in the years to come. Please note that this model is for educational purpose only and you should customize it to your beliefs. Use the model in consultation with your registered investment advisor only. Hope you make a lot of money in this and next financial year and the times to come. Thanks for watching.